Welcome, Mech Warrior. You're accessing beginner level training manuals for the Cyclops CP 10Z provided by Ronan Fox Armored Security. I'll be your instructor, Fox. This tactical debriefing will explain the mech's capabilities, strengths, and weaknesses, as well as how to refit and operate your own Cyclops 10Z. Because this is the beginner level, some restrictions will apply, including no lost tech, no upgrades, no mods, DLC will be allowed. Let us begin. Stormvanger Assemblies Unlimited's Cyclops CP-10Z. Weight Class, Assault. Roll, Juggernaut. Availability, Uncommon. Threat Level, Reduced. Description. The Cyclops was built during the Star League originally as a mobile assault mech. However, it never succeeded in this role and earned a poor reputation for its combat performance. That said, a far more powerful use for the Cyclops made the mech highly valuable. That as a commander mech. The Cyclops featured two highly sophisticated electronic weapons, the Tacticon B-2000 battle computer capable of allowing the pilot to manage an entire brigade-sized mech formation, and the Olmsted 840 communication suite capable of planet-wide communication as long as satellite coverage allowed. As such, the Cyclops became a headquarters mech instead of an assault vehicle where it is highly prized. Unfortunately, the Cyclops' factory in Liao-controlled CAF would be destroyed, causing these systems to become lost tech. Today, it's estimated that only 10% of Cyclops 10Zs have a functioning battle computer. Those searching for a Cyclops will most likely find them in the possession of the Capellan Confederation, who owned the world that its manufacturing took place on. Specifications Maximum weight, 90 tons. Minimum weight, 49 tons. This means 41 tons are available for customization. Top speeds, 64.8 kilometers forwards, 43 kilometers reverse. Standard engine. This could be seen as faster than average speed for an assault class mech. Armor. Stock armor includes 320 units, which is 10 tons of standard armor. Maximum possible armor is 570 units, which is 17.81 tons. This could be seen as notably below average armor for an assault mech. Weaponry includes one AC-20 right torso, with four tons of AC-20 ammo, which is 80 rounds, two in the right torso, two in the left torso. One LRM-10 left torso, with one ton of LRM ammo, which is 440 missiles, or 44 volleys, left torso. One SRM-4 center torso, with one ton of SRM ammo, which is 320 missiles, or 80 volleys, center torso. Two medium lasers, one left arm, one right arm. Two assault hand actuators rated at 25 damage, one in the left arm, one in the right arm. Two additional heat sinks with four engine heat sink slots available. Strengths and weaknesses. The Cyclops 10Z is a juggernaut mech, meaning it is intended to smash through enemies in aggressive close combat. It struggles in this role significantly, but these are its strengths. Quick. The Cyclops is light on its feet for a 90-ton mech, which does allow it to close the distance faster and outmaneuver slower enemies. Full hand actuators provide excellent melee capabilities and options for further melee enhancement. A large ballistic hardpoint offers a wider array of customization options, and it is one of the less common hardpoints. However, its strengths are easily overshadowed by its weaknesses, which include thin armor. Comparable to a well-armored medium mech, the Cyclops is compromised quickly by gunfire, which is not good for a mech that will be the center of attention. While its speed is an advantage, it's accomplished through a very bulky engine, which weighs the mech down, limiting its weaponry options. And these limited options mean that the Cyclops' weaponry and damage output will be curiously mild for a mech that weighs so much. Recustomization. Ronan Fox Armored Security recommends this Cyclops 10Z refit for the beginner level mech warrior as it will resolve the Cyclops' primary weaknesses and improve usability. 
Starting with a strip mech, add one AC-5 burst fire and two tons of AC-5 ammo, which will be 160 rounds. Add one SRM-4 and one SRM-6 with two tons of SRM ammo, which is 640 missiles or 64 volleys. Add two medium lasers short burst, max the armor, and add five heat sinks. This will take the mech over its maximum tonnage limit, bring it into compliance by tuning the armor. Set the rear armor to 10 and move the rest to the forward armor, set the head armor to 24 and the leg armor to 66 each. These changes allow the Cyclops to fully focus on close combat. It is now heavily armored with superior heat sinking capabilities and all of its weapons can be used in close combat while simultaneously still having a long range weapon option for support. Battle ROM. Now that the Cyclops has been refitted, it's time to see how to operate it in the field. These will be the mission conditions. Mission type, battlefield. Difficulty, 87. Drop weight, 360 tons. Allies include one Battlemaster BLR-1G, two longbows LGB-7Q. Pilot skill, elite. All allied mechs are in stock configuration. If you have your own Battle Pod Training Simulator, check Document 1 for an instant action code allowing you to recreate this battle for training purposes. Welcome to Tikhanov, Mech Warrior. The Crucis Lancers are overrunning the planet and the CCAF are in retreat. Ronan Fox's first company, Command Lands, personally led by Commander Fox, takes the field to aid in the fighting withdrawal. He is designated Tenko-1. Tenko Lance lies in ambush, splitting the longbows in the rocky hills while Tenko-1 and 2 hide amongst the local firebase. The ambush is launched as a Kentaro and a Centurion enter the area. Tenko-1 wraps around and flanks the Kentaro, blasting through its fragile rear armor with all of his weapons. The mech falls quickly and the lance collapses on the Centurion, crushing it in moments. The Crucis Lancers launch a pincer attack on Tenko Lance and a Phoenix Hawk engages, attempting to harass the Longbows. However, it underestimates the withering bombardment of 100 LRMs. The missiles batter the mech severely, disabling its weapons, forcing the pilot to eject. On the opposite flank, a Griffin advances, covering a Jaeger mech behind it. However, with the Phoenix Hawk's distraction ploy failing, the entirety of Tenko Lance comes down on the Griffin. Gunfire washes over the mech, and its armor holds admirably, holding out for a surprising amount of time, but without support, it is slowly destroyed. Finally, despite having no support, the Jaeger mech presses on, having been slowed down by Tikhanov's rough terrain. It's greeted by a hail of missile fire from Tenko 3 and 4, rocking the mech significantly and allowing Tenko 1 to round a corner immediately into close combat and shear it apart. Quickly dispatching the lands proved fortuitous as the next wave attacked from the opposite flank of Tenko, bringing a marauder with a Vulcan and a deadly partisan. Tenko-1 ignores the marauder, allowing it to engage in a long-range duel with Tenko's longbows. Instead, he moves up on the lance's flank, searching for the partisan. Its quadruple AC-5s would cause significant damage to the lance and needed to be prioritized. Once the Partisan had been destroyed, Tenko-1 joins the attack on the Marauder, which had already been significantly weakened by the missile barrages. He pushes into the Marauder's flank, destroying its side torso and exposing its core. With the Marauder disabled, the Vulcan finds itself terribly outmatched and destroyed. Tenko Lance reforms their ambush position as the final wave of enemies approach, a stalker leading a cataphract and a Jaeger mech. Tenko 1 patiently holds position allowing the longbows to soften up the enemies as well as create a priority target out of themselves instead of immediately charging in. 
The trap is sprung as the Jaegermech engages. Tanko-1 cautiously provides fire support without fully committing as the Stalker pushes past the Jaegermech to engage Tenko's longbows. The entire lance then prioritizes the Stalker and Tenko-1, as with the Marauder, focuses his fire on the Stalker's side torso, blasting through it and exposing the mech's center torso. The Stalker also attempts to respond at the last moment, but has already lost half of its effective weapons and goes down. The ruined Jaeger mech is felled shortly afterwards, while the Cataphract prioritizes the Cyclops, recognizing it as the Lance Commander. Tenko-1 backs off and begins to loop around the base, confusing the Cataphract surrounding it and allowing for another flanking attack on its rear armor. The Cataphract's armor holds out impressively, but inevitably falls to Tenko's combined assault. The ambush operation proved a complete success, with numerous mechs destroyed and minimal damage sustained. This concludes the tactical debriefing for the Cyclops CP-10Z. You now have a fuller understanding of the Cyclops' capabilities, strengths, and weaknesses, as well as how to refit and operate your own Cyclops 10Z. Thank you for choosing Ronin Fox Armored Security for all your training needs. And that is the Cyclops Guide. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it, as is traditional, though, my final thoughts and rating for the Cyclops. Honestly, I wasn't originally much of a fan of the Cyclops, but we did focus on using it in the current MechWarrior 5 streams. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. You should tune in and watch them. But I was pleasantly surprised what Dr. Sheriff Crab was capable of bringing out in them on his customizations, and it really improved my opinion of them quite a bit. If you want an alternative to the Battlemaster, I think the Cyclops does a really good job of that with its heavy usage of SRMs. Anyways, thanks again for watching my guide. If you liked it, don't forget to show the Fox some love. Give it a like and a comment. It does make a difference. And join my community on Discord. You can find out when I'm streaming and ask any MechWarrior 5 questions you want. Links are down below in the description and on the pinned comment. Anyways, till next time, everyone, remember that you don't have to be good to get good.